Welcome to Study the Solopreneur, a series where we learn about the rewards and challenges of those who've built a successful career for themselves while paving the way for others like you to do the same. I am your host, Dana Gore, and I'm glad to have you with us. Well, let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome to Study the Solopreneur, a series where we discuss the rewards and challenges of living your truth, freeing your mind, and being creative of starting your own business, doing work you love. I am so excited to introduce you to today's guest. Sylvian Nuccio and I go back many years. I first met her, believe it or not, through blog commenting. She had written a post about the law of attraction and I chimed in through the comment section. We hit it off immediately, eventually wrote guest posts for one another's blogs and six years later, here we are. Sylvian is a life coach author, writer, and creator of sylvianuccio.com. She practices what she teaches, how to use your imagination wisely, creating a meaningful life filled with purpose and living your truth. At least, that's how I view her work. So, I am going to, you probably heard some bings that would be one of my social media networks, so I just close that out, and without further ado, let's get started. Hey, Sylvian, how are things going? Hey, Dana. I'm so happy to speak with you today. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure reconnecting with you. And yes. uh, it's been a little while. <laughs> yep. We spoke once since I've been on this side of the ocean. We spoke yeah. once, but yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. And we will talk about, you know, the side of the ocean you are on because, um, I, I know, at least from some of what I had seen, you know, on social media, that you are living a very interesting life, um, very picturesque, I would, I would say, and we'll get into all of that and how you manage to manifest that into your life. Mm -hmm. So yep. tell me, Sylvian, I know what you're doing now. I'm not 100% clear on what you were doing before. So what did you do before becoming a solopreneur? Well, I did a lot of different jobs uh, that I didn't like. Uh, since I can remember, I was never good at having someone order me around. <laughs> so I never enjoyed having a boss. And from the earliest age, I knew that I did not want to have a boss. But unfortunately, yes, I started working jobs. The two main jobs I had in the United States was a working in, in a law firm, a small law firm, and they used me because I was trilingual, my English, French, and Spanish. And the other job was a recruiter. And again, I was hired because of my languages for English and French, because I was working with Canada, Quebec, Quebec Canada. So those were the two jobs the main jobs that I had that were kind of interesting and I learned a lot about different things. But the, the one thing that bothered me was that I had a manager or a boss and that I couldn't stand it. <laughs> so uh, early on, early 2000s, uh, when I heard about network marketing and working online, being your own boss, Mm -hmm. That really attracted me right away. And that was my first solopreneur job was uh, working as a network marketer. Interesting. Interesting. All right. That I did not know. I, it's a popular business model for a lot of people. Uh, some people do very well at it. I personally, it didn't resonate with me, but I know other people do what inspired you to make the change like why did you why why did you end up going into that well you hated having a boss that's you yeah. hate having a boss and a manager and being told what to do yes that, that was the main motivation now i did not like network marketing either because <laughs> i do not like to sell and you still have to sell yep what i did like is the mindset of people and that's where I was introduced to coaching and to the law of attraction and to all that good stuff about the mind. 
So that was very good for me, this part of the network marketing. Uh, but as far as the selling part, I, I hated it. So what I did was writing because I knew I could write and I always loved to write. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started writing articles to sell my business as a network marketer. But anything else like flyers, uh, things, you know, where you have to face people and try to sell them your products, that part I hated and I never wanted to do that. Oh, I can so totally relate. Yeah. And like I said, I know there are people who are great at it. Um, I think it's great for a specific type of person and, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not an easy thing to get into, but in your case, it was like a stepping stone. And I, I love that that's part of your story because sometimes people go into something and they think that the thing they go into is going to be the thing, but sometimes it's just a step Toward what exactly um, yes yes yeah going where you want to go from where you are mm -hmm. it's like a staircase you know you have to go step by step by step mm -hmm. after network marketing i did affiliate marketing because then i didn't have to face anyone i just could write and write and write articles after articles so that was the second step you know i didn't go from uh from my office as a recruiter uh, to uh, being a coach. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you evolved into what you are doing now, which I think is great, you know, and I think it, it adds a certain amount of flexibility to sort of kind of hang back, live your truth, and sort of just allow things to unfold in front of you. And they're not always going to be what you set out, but sometimes... Sometimes you don't end up with what you initially wanted, but you end up with what you needed, with what was the best way, which might not have been the first way. Mm -hmm. And that's about listening to your story. I mean, yeah. so you're a successful blogger, writer, and coach. Um, there had to have been some obstacles and challenges that you encountered along the way. I think we all do. How have you handled them? My main... Uh, the main problem that I had, and that's why I got interested into it, uh, was my mindset. Uh, I, w I did not believe in myself enough. And um, that's why I was very interested in the coaching side of the uh, network marketing. And um, I realized that a lot of things that were blocking me was it was all in my head. So that was the main part, you know. I think that if I had been like a free thinker uh, with a nice pinky life, you know, everything went so well in my life. I have so much self-confidence. I would have been able to go much faster. Mm -hmm. But man, oh man, I had so many layers of crap mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that I had to take care of. Mm 